so in advanced single process communication method uh, we we already discussed about uh, stream pipes okay in the stream pipes will be it is also called as a full duplex pipe where the communication can happen in both the direction and there will be only one uh, pipe descriptor that is parent descriptor G and the child will be using file descriptor one for both read and write operation. Okay, and you can see they can perform both the operations. So you can see the arrow head pointing in both the directions. Okay, so that is about a uh, full direction or a full duplex uh, pipe. And moving on to the next topic, passing file descriptors. Okay, so here, the ability to pass an open file descriptor between the processes powerful application okay so the process we know that there are different types of process they want to communicate with each other so they want to pass certain data so they can do it using file descriptors so whenever we open a file whenever we try to read a file so there will be a file descriptor using this file descriptors the communication can happen between the process which is a powerful technique okay so here uh, it can lead to a different ways of designing a client server application. So if you go for file, uh, file descriptor way of communication between the process, so we can think about uh, different designing of client and server application. So client and server application is nothing but server is one process, okay. And client is also a process, okay. So few process will be considered as a client and the main process which from which you want to take the service will be considered as a server process. Okay, so one thing is using this file descriptor, we can go for different designing of client server applications. Okay, so it allows one process, typically we call it as a server, to do everything that is required to open a file. So what a server will do using this file descriptor, it will Right. It will do all, it, it can do all the things that is needed to open a file. For example, what and all you can do using the server, it involves such as the details such as translating the network mail to a network address, okay, dialing a model, uh, negotiating locks for a file. So certain apps, certain things okay, it can do using this file descriptors. Okay. And it can also simply pass back to the calling process that is nothing but the client. Okay, once it is done, the different uh, task, okay, different task opening the file. Okay, once it is done, opening the file, then uh, dialing, uh, negotiating, or uh, trying to work with the locks. Okay, once everything is done, so it can pass the, uh, the file descriptor back to the client process. Okay, that can be used with all its input output functions. So further, once the client gets the file descriptor, it can start working with these things. So it can access the network, it can dial the modem, it can perform uh, different uh, operations on the file based on logs. Okay. So this is how we can pass the file descriptor from the server process to the client process. And here, so all the details, okay, what, whatever the things we do, like opening here, whatever the task we do, okay, dialing a model, whatever it is. So all the details involved in opening the file or a device are transparent to the client. So they are not, uh, the, the client is not visible or knowing all those things, okay. So client is, uh, these things are transparent to the client. So here we can see this is a diagram, okay. So in this diagram, it shows uh, passing an open file from a top process to the bottom process. Okay, so we are passing from the file to one process to the another process. You can see in this diagram, there are two processes. Okay, this is one process which has their own process table entry. And similarly, this is one more process with its own process table entry. Okay. In the figure, uh, we have two uh, processes. Okay. So when we pass an open file descriptor from one process to another, we want to pass 
okay, the passing process and the receiving process to share the same file table entry. Okay, so you can see here they have their own process table entry. Okay, so it could be better if they have their own a single process table entry. So here you can see here uh, in this arrangement what we do is we create for two process we create a single file a process table so this is the single process table okay, which is shared by two process okay. so both the passing process and the receiving process they share the same file table entry which is shown in this uh, diagram okay. Uh, so here what we do is we pass a pointer to an open file table entry from one process to the another process. Okay. So this pointer is assigned the first available descriptor in the receiving process. So here that is what the diagram shows sharing the open file table. And similarly, you can see here there is one more table that is you know the table which is having the information, different information about the file open. And here, basically we have three functions okay, to pass the file descriptor and to receive the file descriptor. So these are the different functions. Okay. So for passing and uh, sending and receiving the file descriptor for performing different operations. So this is the send FD okay, for sending. And this is when you want to send some error message. So it returns zero if everything is okay or minus one on error. And similarly, this is if the client wants to receive the file descriptor, it will run this receive FD. A process normally normally a server want to pass a descriptor to another process. Okay. So in that case, in that case, we'll be using this send FD when the server want to pass a descriptor to the client process. Okay. So similarly, it can also use this server can also use this function for sending some error messages. Okay. Then and the last is when the process is waiting to receive the descriptor that is the uh, client. Okay. So to receive the descriptor, it can use this receive FD. And here, while sending, there is a file descriptor. Okay. So what are the parameters we have file descriptor? And we also have an integer field. Okay, indicating uh, how many requests we have sent. And here we have status, okay, status byte. So the value it will be ranging from status byte can range from minus one to uh, minus two fifty five, indicating different types of uh, error messages. Okay, minus one to minus two uh, to fifty five. Okay, and Any receive function, okay. receive function, it is called by the client to receive the file descriptor. It returns OK, okay. and the non-negative descriptor is written as a value of the function. On error, it returns negative values. Then here also we have a function that is user-defined function. Okay. If an error message was sent by the server, then the client will be executing this user function. Okay, so this is to execute certain user function when something goes wrong, okay, or when you receive the file descriptor from the server. Okay. So this, are, this is about three. As you can see the description is given here. So this is not the same explanation what I had given previously. And coming to your macros, okay. uh, again we have three macros to be, they are used to access the control data. Okay. Uh, there are two macros, one is this and another one is this one. Okay. Two macros and uh, 
So apart from this, there are a few more here you can see. So one macro is used to help to calculate the value of the user message length. User for the message length. Okay, so this is the macro okay, message data. The pointer to data associated with the message structure. Okay, so here we have a pointer okay, indicating the message structure. You want to send the data message from server to the client. Okay, you can use this. And this is a pointer which is pointing to the message structure. Okay. And similarly, here we have first header. So this is having a pointer. So that is a pointer to point to the first message structure associated with the message header structure. So the first pointer, pointer to the first message structure. And null if no, none exists. If there is no message exists, then it will be having none. So this is a pointer to the first message. And similarly, we have next header. So here we have two pointers. One is pointing to the first uh, first message, okay, pointer to the next message structure associated with the message uh, header structure, giving the current message structure okay, or none. And this is the last one indicating the message length in terms of uh, bytes, okay. size to allocate the data object n bytes. So how much amount of data you are transferring from the client or from the server to the client. The message length macro returns the number of bytes needed to store the data object of size n bytes after adding the size of the message structure. Okay. Adjacent for any alignment constraint required by the process structure and rounding it. So entire thing, okay. So entire message structure will be written in terms of bytes. So that is about file descriptor. How the file descriptors can be used to communicate between the client process and the server process. So coming to the next one, open server version one. So this is in continuation with the previous the file descriptor passing technique. So this is one of the technique that comes under file descriptor passing. Uh, here we have a server which we call it as a open server. Okay, we know that file descriptor is used between the server and the client. Here we have a special server which we call it as a open server. Okay. So open server is nothing but a server that is designed as a separate program. Okay. Server is designed as a separate program that is executed by a process to open on one or more files. The server is nothing but a separate program that is executed by a process. Okay. So that process is nothing but a client to open one or more files. Okay. So here, instead of sending the content of file back to the calling process, however, the server sends back an open file descriptor. So here we'll be having server and the client process. So using file descriptor, it performs the different tasks like opening the file and all. Okay. So once this is done, it passes this descriptor to the client process. Okay. You'll be having different client, not just one the client. There will be number of clients. So once it is done, it is it will pass that file descriptor to the client process. Okay. So, so it will perform different tasks using this file descriptor like opening the files, file for reading, writing, different tasks. Okay, once it is done, however, it will send back an open file descriptor to the calling process that is nothing but the one which has requested from the server. As a result, the open process can work with any type of file. Okay, so it can work with any type of file. Using this, it can uh, work with any type of file such as device file or socket file. Okay, not only simple regular files. Okay, so previous technique whatever we have discussed. Okay, 
previously we have discussed this right which is works only for the regular files we have different types of files right so device files and all so you for that files if you want to work on those files we need a special server that is called as a open server the client and the server exchange the minimum amount of information using this interprocess communication so here what is the minimum amount of information that is exchanged between the client and the server so they will exchange the file name okay what type of file is been open and what is the mode what type what mode whether the file is open for read mode or write mode or append mode whatever it is so only these two information is passed between the server and the client so what are the information one is file name okay what type of file is open and one more is mode so these are the minimum information that is passed between the open server and the client the content of the file are not exchanged between the uh, client and the server that we have to remember no content is passed between the client and the server so there are different uh, advantages in designing an open server so why we have to go for this technique of communication between the A server and the client. What is the advantage? So, why we are going for a server as a separate executable program? Okay. So there are three advantages. First one is server can easily be contacted by any client similar to the client using any library function. Okay. So client can easily contact with any server using this open server. So simply it has to execute this open server program to communicate with the server okay. next one is if we need to change the server okay so we know that server is a executable program if you want to change any uh, we want to change the server or we want to make any change to the server okay. only a single program is affected so only we have to change to the executable program okay so only that change we have to do no other changes need to be done for this so only a single program to be uh, affected next one is server can be can be set a user id program okay the server can set a uh, set user id program providing it with additional permission that the client can does uh, does not have okay so it can use a special program server can use a special program that is set user id program to add you additional permission to the client okay which it was not having before and coming to this open uh, server uh, application okay we define following application protocols between the client and the server different functions okay. so here how the client can request or client how the server can communicate or client can communicate to the server so how to communicate the client sends a request okay so using this form so this is a syntax open path name Okay, and followed by the mode and a null value. So across the file descriptor file to the server. So this is how the client communicates or requests the uh, server uh, for any service. Okay. So here we have the path name. So path name of our server and open mode. So open mode is a numerical value in ASCII decimal. Okay. Of uh, which is a second argument to the open function so this is a first argument and this is a second argument and finally it is terminated by a null byte so this is terminated by a null byte so we need to indicate when we request when the client request the server it need to indicate the path name of the server and in which mode we need to open the uh, server server sends back an open descriptor or an error by calling either send ft or send error so this is similar to the previous thing what we have discussed okay so previously here we have discussed right 
10 depth we understand the error. So this is how the server communicates back to the to the client. Okay. Either using this 10 FT or error message. Yes. Now we first have to use this header file for this. Open server, we need to use this header file, which includes all the standard headers defined in the function prototype. So this is a header file. And here client request for the server it can use the CS open. So using this. So this is what is there. So this is our open dot hedger head uh, h library. So this is our what is the content of this open dot h. Okay. So this is open dot h inside that open dot h we will be having this these things. Okay. We still be having this function cs open which is used for uh, sending the client request for the server. Okay. When we open this header file, this library file, you can see these three lines. And we can see here a program. Okay, this is a program. Uh, here you can see there is a main function, which is a loop that reads the path name. Okay, you can see here we are using f gets. So this is used for reading the path name from the standard input. That is from the keyboard we are reading the path name and copy the file to the standard output. So once we are getting that, okay, we are trying to connect it using the CS open. Okay, repeatedly we are trying to, uh, we are getting the path name, we are trying to open. Okay, and then we are trying to print that. Okay. Copies the files to the standard output. It calls the function CS open. So this is so here you can see here we have temporary uh, buffers or strings. So these are strings. Okay. And this line is used for reading the file name to the uh, cat from standard input. From the keyboard we are reading the standard input uh, file name. Okay. Server file name. You have to get line, match line, or So this is what we are reading. The file name. Okay. Once we read the file name or the path name, and next we are trying to open the file. We are trying to open the file using CS open. Okay. So CS open prints error from the server. So suppose if it is not able to open the file, particular file from the server. Okay, particular file if you are not able to open from the server then it will return an error message okay, and then cat to the standard output so we are trying to read so whatever the file uh, we are whatever the file if you are able to access the particular file from the server then the content of that file will be displayed to the standard output. We are trying to read that file from the server and finally we are trying to write that file to the standard output. If not possible then return the error message. Okay. So once using this what you have to do? You have to request, the client should request uh, the server, particular server. Okay. Once you get the connection to the server, okay. once you get the connection client gets a connection to the server. This is a server, this is a client. So here using the file descriptor, uh, client has, server has opened different files, different files. Okay. And now the client want to use this files. Client want to read the content of this files. Okay. Only it is giving the back only the file descriptor. Using this file descriptor, it wants to read the content of this file. So what we do? First, we give the name of the file. Each file will be having a name. Okay. So yeah, I'll do F1, F2, and F3. Okay. Assume that it wants to read F3 file. So first, we are entering the file name using F gets. 
So using the keyboard, we are entering the name of the file F3. Then we are trying to open that F3 file. Okay, if you are able to open the file, we are reading the content of that F3 file. Okay, once you are done reading the content, you are writing the content of the F3 file to the terminal, that is to the standard output. You are displaying the content. Okay, so this is how we are using the function ps open to read the content of the file and display the content of the file. So this is about open server. Moving on to the next last topic that is client server connection functions. Okay. So here we will be discussing different functions, different functions for connecting between the client and the servers. So we have discussed about file stream or duplex uh, pipes, okay, which is one of the useful interprocess communication techniques between the process, that is between the client process and the server process, or we can say between the parent and the child process. Okay, that is one technique. Okay, and there we discuss the different uh, uh, prototypes or different functions for communicating between the client and the server process. The next we discuss about open server, the previous topic open server. So there also we discuss how we are able to pass the file descriptor from the client to the parent process. Now we'll discuss about uh, the server creates a one end of the string file with a well-known name. So this is one approach. So this is one technique so we are discussing with for client server communication, which is which we can say that is a better approach uh, compared to all the, all the techniques that we have discussed so far. Or uh, maybe a string file pipe or simple pipe or um, or even your shared uh, memory message queue semaphores. Compared to all, this is one of the better approach for. Uh, client to communicate with the server. So here the server creates one end of the stream file with a well-known name and the client connects to that end. The client connects to that end. Each time a new client connects to the server named the stream file, a brand new stream file is created between the client and the server. So that is nothing but here if we have a server and suppose if you have two clients, okay. so we know that the stream pipe will be having two ends. Okay. So using these two ends, okay, a new stream is a brand new stream. So these are the new two stream that is created between the client and the server for communication. This way, server is notified each time a new client connects to the Server. Using this, whenever a new client requests, a new stream is created, a new connection is created, and the server will understand that yes, new one more client is trying to connect to that. And when any client terminates, even that time also, this connection will be deleted. Okay, this connection that is stream will be deleted. Then the server will understand that yes, the client is uh, done with this job. Three function that is used by the client server to establish this peer client connection. So what is this? Okay, how we are going to uh, go, go, how we are trying to connect between the client and the server. So here we have uh, different functions. Okay. So first a server has to announce it's willing to listen to the client connection on a well-known name. So what we are the client server what it has to do initially the first step okay first step is announcing the server should tell that should tell that i am ready to accept the client request okay uh, the server is ready to accept the client request okay so it has to so for that the server will be using this function server underscore listen so here it is 
path is passing a name okay so it is name is nothing but a well known name of the server so this is a name of the server okay so this is the function that is executed by the server telling that i am ready to accept the client request so this is the name of the server now as a result okay, as a result of executing this function a file descriptor is returned okay a file descriptor is returned to the listen if everything is okay or it returns no negative value on error then once the server is ready use this name when the server so once if this no name is known so maybe this name is from s1 or s2 once this name is known the client can use this name to communicate uh, with the server the return value as i already said it is a file descriptor for the server end of named stream type okay once a server has called this function server listen okay next function is is to call server accept okay so server accept to wait for the client connection to arrive so it is nothing but waiting the server is ready but telling that it is waiting for the client connection so this is the next function okay server accept so server accept function is to wait for the client connection to arrive so here we have listen ft so listen ft is nothing but it's a descriptor that you have got from here okay let us tell that we have got this descriptor as fd0 okay so this is a descriptor okay let us assume that this is a descriptor we have received so that descriptor whatever you have received it will be passed as the first parameter okay then here so descriptor from the server listen next parameter is pointer pointing to the effective user id of the client okay so this uid is nothing but effective user id of the client so you have to tell what which i which client you are trying to connect so that is a user id you have to pass so this function does not return until a client connects to the server so this function returns when a connection been established between the client and the server so that is second function so this is the first function okay. so this is nothing but effective user id of the client pointing to the client server i mean client process okay next client just calls uh, this function client connection okay so this is the third function client connection connect to the server so this is a third function which is used for connecting to the server okay so this is a name so here name is specified by the client must be same as the name that was advertised by the server call so this name is the same as the name this is nothing but the name of the server so client is trying to connect to which server name of the server okay So this is client connection. So here it returns the file descriptor that was the stream file that is connected to the server or negative num negative value on error. Okay. So here these are the different functions. So once this is done, these three things are done. So there is a well-known connection that is established between the server and the client, and the client can Uh, request the services from the server okay so we have different versions of unix like svv4 ds uh, d different versions 
again using open server you can communicate so here we will be discussing about the version 1 version that is vstv part 4 okay system v release 4 provides mounted stream and stream processing module that is called as this there is a special module connection okay that we can use to provide named stream type with a unique connection to the server so this is the module that is used between the client and the server for providing the unique connection so this module is used to provide a named stream type with unique connection to the server okay. so here when if another process calls open for the named end of the file okay what happens that means when trying when the client is trying to connect to the server what happens a new pipe is created a new pipe is created between the client and the server a new pipe is created you can see here between the process a new pipe is created one stream for the new pipe is passed to the client okay so one end is passed to the client and uh, passed to the client as a return value from the o open and other descriptor is passed to the server on the other end of the named pipe the server receives this new file descriptor using some building function so when a client is trying to connect one descriptor is passed to the client another file descriptor is passed to the server so here we have uh, you can see here we are, we are having this uh, server listen function okay, this is what is there inside this server listen function okay, you can see here this is server listen function So this is listen function and this is the name of the server. So here we are trying to create a file and now the point to be just attached. Okay. So we are trying to create the connection, we are trying to create the pipe here. Okay, we are trying to create a pipe. So once we are written with the file descriptor, okay, then using this function, IO input output, push the connection using this. Okay, and you pass FD0 is where the client connection arrives. The FD0 is a file descriptor that is used for getting the connection. So in the above program, what happens? Okay. In the above program, a new file uh, pipe is created. Okay, we are creating a new pipe using this create function. You can see here create function. So create function is used for creating a new pipe. One descriptor for the new pipe is passed to the client. Okay, so that is FD0 is passed to the client and FD1 is passed to the so this is so here there are two descriptors FD0 and FD0 is passed to the client so this is we are passing and using this function okay, we are passing this FD1 to the server so there are two descriptors okay, so this is for the server we are creating the streamed pipe using this function okay. so here you can see here between the client and the server 
the file descriptor in the client directory is written by the open a new descriptor in the fd id is received by the server using this iot iocdl for i receive so this is how the connection will be established between the client and the server so this is about server accept function so in detail it is showing about server accept function so server accept function as we already discussed server accept is used for to wait for the client connection to arrive so here server is waiting for the connection a client connection to arrive for that we are using the server accept So here we are using this function for listening to this client. So, so we are we are waiting for the client connection or the client signal. Okay. So once we get the client signal, we are getting the set user ID of the caller. That is the set user ID of the client is received. Okay. And we are once we receive the set user ID of the client, we return that new description. So this is the last function, or the CLI connection function, that is connecting to the server by calling. So this is to establish the connection between the client and the server. So this creates the end client endpoint to be connected to the server. Openly mounted screen. So these are the functions that is used for uh, creating the connections. So This is all about your module four. So in the module four, we discussed about the uh, continuation of module three, that is changing user ID and changing group ID. So what is the interval time? What is process accounting? Different types of process times, and coming coming to a new topic that is interval communication. what are the different types of interprocess communication method what is a pipe so this completes your five modules so if you have any doubts you can ask me